everyone and welcome to part 2 of our guide on inner city view. Now in the first part we saw different menus and icons which are present on the home screen in the inner city. But in this video we are going to explore all the buildings which we have. We looked at the castle in the first video but we skipped all the other buildings and there are many important buildings in the city. Rather it's apt to say that uh, all the buildings in the city are equally important and have their own significant role. So without wasting any time let's get started. So although we had a look at the castle in the first video let's have a quick look once more. So as we can see here there are two types of upgrades for each kind of building. The first one is the normal upgrade where you can reach the maximum level of 25. And once you have completed level 25, after that you have unlocked the glory levels which go up to level 10. As you can see here, at level 10 it would give you army size of 100k and uh, talent points of 20. So like this, there are different advantages for upgrading not just castle but any building. And now after having a look at the castle and its importance, now let's have a look at other buildings. So. I would like to start with the Maester Tower because this is a very important building in my opinion. Now this is where you do all the researches. There are different research trees starting from T1 to unlocking T5. All the researches are done under this building. There are so many important researches that we do when we start playing for example the production and then unlocking T4, then expedition get more and more damage against rebel leaders so this is a very important building and upgrading it to level 25 would grant your would grant you 30% research speed and similarly if you upgrade the glory level of this building that too gives research speed and as you can see at max level it gives you 10% additional research speed and at the same time it also gives you 12% fervor attack which is basically total attack so which is also pretty good. After Maester Tower let's have a look at the barracks. Now this is another important building because this is where you train your troops and uh, after reaching 25 you get single training quantity boost of 5000 and at the same time you also get total defense of 10%. Similarly, if you improve its glory level, then at maximum level 10, you would get 5000 additional troop training capacity and at the same time you would also get 12% forward defense, which is basically like total defense. But it would only be active when you are in fervor, just like fervor attack and fervor health. After barracks, let's have a look at the hospitals. Now this is another important building because when we fight in events or anywhere, Basically when we bring our troops to any battlefield then some of them die and some of them are wounded. So all the wounded troops basically are transferred to the hospital. So it's important to have as high hospital capacity as possible. Having 1 million hospital capacity too would be outstanding, amazing. And as you can see at level 25 we get hospital capacity increase of 40,000 and we also get total health which is 5%. And when we work on the glory level of our hospital, then that too gives first of all 40,000 additional hospital capacity and also gives 12% fervor health. So once again, if you are in fervor, then your health would be increased by 12% if it is at max level. Alright, so now after hospital, let's have a look at Bannerman Hall. Now this is a building where you can control the strategic parts. For example, all the rally attacks which you or your lines are doing, then having defense assistance. For example, if you are getting rallied, people can reinforce you. Then you can make army configurations. For example, if you are a spear commander, you can have your best five commanders selected and you can deploy them with a single click when in the battle. So this is quite handy. And then we also have real-time strategy presets nowadays which means that if you are participating in SOW or All Out War which has recently concluded. So there also you can use different armies and you can unlock more configurations by doing certain researches from the Maester's Tower. Now let's move on to the next building, Embassy. Now Embassy is where you can see which all of your alliance members have reinforced you. 
as of this moment you can see that no one has reinforced me now if you upgrade the embassy building to level 25 it first of all gives you 1 million reinforcement capacity bonus and then it also gives 10% reinforcement marching speed similarly if you are upgrading its glory level as well then your reinforcement capacity and total health would take a boost at max level you can get 200k additional reinforcement capacity and 12% total health then we have blacksmith building now this is a very important building once again because this is where you can forge your gears armors and you can also control all the badges like upgrade them once you have enough you can combine them or if you do not have enough you can dismantle them use them as per the best of their quality then it also has refinement section where there are different slots you can upgrade it and get more stats then we have tavern now tavern is a very important building because this is where you have all your commanders and the friendships now all the friendship chests which we get the items which we get now this is the place where we use them based on the commander level their quality now for example as we can see here we have genie who gives aptitude now aptitude basically let me show you aptitude city building or aptitude it gives speed ups finance means gold then command means troops combat rate that is CR means basically additional stats battle bonus as we can say and then leadership means army size then we have another small building that is merchant guild now this is basically a spot for all the rebel chests to appear the boxes which we get after rallying rebel camps so I won't say this is a crucial building to be honest but yes this is something where you can check which all boxes you have you can only have three boxes at most then we have market now this is an interesting place because this is a spot from where you send or receive resources to your ally to or from your ally um, basically you need to select your ally they just need to be on the same server and after that once you select them you can send all the resources which you have there is obviously some transport tax as well which you can reduce a bit by doing some researches once again upgrading your market would help you transport more resources at the same time and also would help you reduce taxation and uh, it would also help you increase the transporting speed the marching speed which you have similarly with the glory levels also you can increase the transport capacity and also total attack so because of this additional factor i believe that the glory levels of market are really crucial you can get 12 percent total attack which is not even fervor attack so basically it's like owned bonus you can always have it and 500k additional transport capacity that means you can transfer more and more resources to your allies then we have shelter now this is a very important building if you are a blank castle or a zero castle because let's say you are under attack and you do not have enough troops to tank that sing solo or rally so this is a very important building for many players who play zero castle now this is a place where you can send your troops in case of emergency or in case you want to hide them now the thing is that if you're sending your lord along with your troops to the shelter then neither these troops nor the lord will take part in the fight so let's say you have a lord on your wall but if you sent your lord to the shelter that means that he will not fight and you will not be able to use it unless you recall them so for example i sent my lord along with all these troops for 12 hours in the shelter now all these troops and my lord are in the shelter they are taking refuge so if i wish to use my lord now then i need to recall that's how the shelter works until then my lord will not take effect on any level then we have a very very important building in my opinion that is the iron bank now this is a place where you can deposit your blue diamonds for either 30 days or 14 days or 7 days now obviously long term investments are more fruitful as we all know so 
I always go for the 30 day investment and at the end of 30 days you can get matured blue diamond rewards so for example let's say if I invest 24,000 blue diamonds I would get 45,600 blue diamonds after 30 days so this is really amazing and you should always have this up and running now again this base interest and interest rate bonus these things can be increased by in improving the iron bank however we do not have the glory level for the iron bank building yet so this is one thing and uh, another point is that uh, in order to upgrade the iron bank you need money lenders contracts and the source for it is blue diamonds again so what you can do is unless you get it maxed you can keep investing in iron bank and then whatever returns you are getting just use those additional blue diamonds to upgrade the iron bank itself no don't spend it anywhere else unless it's level 9 so that is most important then we have another building and that is warehouse now warehouse basically means that all the troops all the basically means that all the resources which are under the warehouse protection they cannot be taken away even if you are attacked so for example grain protection limit is 2.5 million and iron stone wood gold all the resources here they have 2.5 million protection limit that means for example on my screen I have 11.5 million grain right now so if someone hits my castle still I will not lose 2.5 million they can take away the rest of 9 million grain but 2.5 is safe here similarly if we go to the glory level now its glory level is also pretty good but for different reasons and that is because it gives motivation recovery and endurance recovery now endurance recovery is not something I would really say that it's important but motivation recovery is highly important because it means you get more motivation which means you can kill more rebel leaders and that eventually means more alliance gifts for you and your alliance mates more speed ups, more resources, more diamonds so all in all motivation recovery in general is really good so at level 10 you get 20% motivation recovery and endurance recovery as well now let's have a look at the rookery now this is a place basically which is responsible for all the important messages which we get like when we are under attack or uh, garrisons are under attack or camps are under attack our cities are under attack we are being rallied so for these things rookery is the most important part if you see at level 25 max it gives 10% siege attack reduction which means that if we are being rallied or soloed or attacked by any player then that siege attack reduction is basically like 10% of total attack reduction for enemy which is pretty good and if you look at the glory level then that again improves the siege attack reduction and further gives you 20% additional siege attack reduction so this is pretty amazing and apart from that there are other tabs as well under management tab more importantly you can get one protector so for example if you are aware that you might be extremely busy in the coming days and you might not be able to renew your bubble protection cruise and right on time and you might be in danger so you can get one protector here so for example I'll select it I'll go with my main account confirm it and then it would ask please select the duration so I would say that okay well I want you to be my protector for seven days and then I can click on confirm and then it the request would go to the other account similarly I can also protect to other people under my account and then I will be able to activate trues for them for their accounts on their behalf also if you are married to someone in game then they are your permanent protector and you are their permanent protector so that is something which is constant but this account is not married to anyone so this is empty then we have another important building called the dungeon now this is a place where you keep the enemy lord once you have captured them during the game during the battle phase now this is a very important place because you can capture different lords now we know that uh, capturing a level 60 lord gives us a good bonus and executing lords 
or hops as we know they also give us good amount of ta additional ta so in order to execute them we first need to hold them captive and uh, this is the place where we hold them so if you upgrade your dungeon to level 25 that means the execution time gets reduced by 40% so for example if you have a half account and you want to execute it then if you do not have your dungeon at max level then it is quite some time you need to wait but if it is max then you can do it really quickly and additional effect then high ex level of lord imprisoned now this is a very important point as we know imprisoning or capturing a level 60 lord gives us 30% attack which is total attack which is very huge and uh, in order to have that you need to have your dungeon at level 25 now also we have glory levels now glory levels if you are maxing it it gives you 20% total enemy health reduction so it would make your enemy weaker now another building which is directly associated with dungeon is hall of faces now this is a place where basically you get the bonus for executing the enemy lords so as you can see here executing any lord which fulfills the requirement minimum requirement uh, it gives us 38% total attack 21% a marching speed and 38% total health and total defense as well so once we start upgrading it and we max it finally then these are the bonuses which we are getting at max level so as you can see here from normal upgrade level 1 at level 1 you are not getting anything except 1% total defense but when you get it at level 25 it gives quite good buffs but these buffs are not active unless you have executed a lord so basically you need to keep that lord in your dungeon for quite some time once it's eligible for the execution then you execute it and then you get this army bonus similarly if we go with the glory level then its glory level gives enemy total attack reduction so currently i am not getting any because my glory level is zero but if i manage to max the glory level to level 10 i would get 20% enemy total attack reduction which is also pretty huge All right so now we have completed all the important buildings which we have inside our city so now let's quickly have a look at some other buildings which can be built outside our city premise so as you can see here i have an empty slot here so if i click on it we can see that there are four options to choose from the first one is farmland now farmlands are responsible for producing grains lumber yards can produce large amount of wood quarry are important for producing stones and then mines are responsible for producing iron now these are the four buildings you can choose from basically when a person is targeting to create a farm account then they usually go with any one kind and they build most of them so as you can see here i mostly have farmland which are nine and i have mines which are five so let's say i still want to go with the farmland i click on it and then you can see here i am getting a free option to upgrade it or rather to unlock it so if i click on it i have a level 1 farmland established now let's try to upgrade it to the maximum level i can for free all right so now you can see that i can i was able to upgrade the farmland to level 9 for free similarly if you wish you can create any kind of building there are so many slots out there you can basically choose any kind you want and then upgrade it similarly there are other kinds of buildings as well now if you see i have another empty slot if i click on it now here i am getting different options so if you see i have 15 mints now mints are responsible for producing large amount of gold which is obviously the most valuable resource in the game then we have hospital which increases the hospital capacity as i said earlier having large hospital capacity is really important as well and then you can also build army tents which would increase your training capacity if you want to bulk train lots of soldiers so that is something you can go with but mostly people go with either mints or uh, hospitals so in this case i would simply go with the mint now similarly just like i created a farmland i can create a mint and as you can see it has 
been upgraded to level 10 and now it would start producing more gold for my city so I believe that winds up our second part of the guide as well I know both the parts have been quite lengthy and uh, well there was too much to cover to be very honest inner city view is a wide topic and uh, I try to keep it short but I hope these guides would help you perform better understand the game better and enjoy it most importantly so good luck have fun and cheers